have to spend a lot of time in wrist braces. My feeling is ergonomically this works better for your hand, gives you a clean sound, and is going to save your hands in the long run. And as final piece of get set, take one hand and cover all your strings and just you'll be able to practice this stroke whether you sit in the mirror and see the edge of your hand or whether you just lightly look down and you see that third knuckle at least. In other words, if you go like that, you're going to see them all. But sitting in a nice position, just dropping your eyes, keeping your neck relaxed, keeping everything, your shoulders relaxed, because we want to accentuate this. And hear that thumb right from the start every time. And as we get ready and set to go, when we go, in the next segment, I will expand on that. This is where we just left off. And this is where we start to go. Your strum, I call it a double thumb strum. Strum, thumb because the thumb is hitting every backbeat. Now, we hadn't talked about this yet, but start to think in terms musically of the downbeat and the backbeat, or the front of the beat and the back of the beat, because when you see it written, you're gonna see eighth note, eighth note, or 16th, 16th, depends upon how people wrote, what time signature, not gonna say anything further on that, but the front of the beat is almost always a downstroke with your hand. And that downstroke is coming very easily because gravity is going to do that work. Just relax and let it fall. Kind of guide your hand in with your thumb if you like. Let the fingernail strike across the strings. Here's index finger. Here's middle finger. <clears throat> Doesn't matter. And get that and then let the thumb sound as you lift your hand. If you miss the strings on your way down, just keep going. If you miss the thumb on the way up and you don't hear anything, just keep going. Because while we're aiming for this, you're going to hear it's this, you're going to hear this, and those are all techniques you're going to need later on intentionally. But right now, intentionally, we're looking for this. Drop, lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop, lift. And while we're what I call choking the strings, <coughs> you can watch TV, you can talk with your partner, you can be on the phone, you can be watching the birds, you can close your eyes. This is supposed to be the way you start to become smooth. This may take a while. It's also a way you'll be able to practice slower and bringing the speed up without thinking too much about tunes. And if you put on some music at the same time, which I'm not going to do right now, <coughs> you'll find that you can follow right along at full speed, quarter speed, or half speed, or even dead slow while the music is playing at full speed. And I do urge you to listen to as much old-time string band music as you can. Paying attention to the fiddlers for mel melody is something we're going to get into later on. But right now, we're looking for that rhythm, that stroke and stroke and stroke. So this hand is starting to go. As you work with it, it just starts to go. Like I said, this is going to be your key. When you go to drop thumb, this is not going to change. So whatever you play, just so you know, I'm going to play it. A, oh, let's see. Fly around my pretty little miss. Now pay attention to the right hand. The motion doesn't change. I'm not going to change it, but I am going to change the tune. I'm going to speed it up. No matter 
how fast or how slow. This is important because it's going to be your anchor for everything you do. But we're going to move into the left hand at this point. The go.